again. Uh, start again. <laughs> Good. Thanks for taking the time to watch this short video. Today I'm here to talk about using the Hilly Bird Niac. I've had the tent for about a year now. I've managed to use it about a dozen or so times. And this year I'm planning on using it a lot more. So I'm going to talk about what you actually get with the tent. Then I'm going to show you how I patch up the tent. Have a look at the inside interior, how I use the tent. And have a wee talk about the fabrics and whatnot and the quality. Uh, before we really start, let's just have a look at what we got in the bag. So I'm just going to start by having a look at what you actually get when you buy the tent. So in the pack we've got the tent, we've got a set of poles, and then here we've got 10 of the Hilleberg pegs. Uh, Hilleberg claim everything in is 1.7 kilograms. Now when I got the tent, uh, sent out to me a way that I actually weigh slightly less, so I was quite happy with that. I've also added a few optional extras. There's a bag here, um, inside this would have been a Hilleberg footprint, that adds another 300 grams. I leave that attached to the tent when I pack it away, I just dry it off when I get back home, and the footprint's attached all the time, it's just easier for pitching up. And also, again, Hilleberg packaging and it's an extra pole set. The idea of this is you can remove the inner and pitch the inner on its own using these. So if we've got enough time, hopefully I'll show you that as well later on in the video. Well, what I like about the tent, just, just very quickly, or our Hilleberg, or Hilleberg, sorry, is everything here, this is actually made from the floor material of the tent. This is the Noceum mesh that you get on the door of the tent. So, back to the tent itself, I'll just quickly show you what we got. We've got the tent in the bag here, so everything all in with all the extras, all the bags, the pole bags, everything, the footprint, all came up to two kilograms. Not the lightest for some of the ultra light guys, but I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I'll just leave the tent there just now, I'm going to pitch in a minute. What you might notice, I'll mention this later on as well. I keep the, the tent, one of the guy lines out and attach it onto my rucksack. And the idea is, once I get to camp, if it's really windy and I take the tent out of the bag, it doesn't blow away. So, I'm going to have a quick look at the poles. I'll get these set up for you. Well, what you get with the tent is 9mm stack poles. Very, very good quality. Very strong. And I really like them in this sort of anodized gold as well. So really strong, lightweight poles there. What I've also did though, is I've added an extra. You, you can double tent the peg, uh, sorry, double pole the tent. You can get an extra set of poles. What I've decided to do was though, I went one further and I saved up a bit of extra cash. I had to wait a while on these in order. I got a set of 10 mil poles. You normally get these with the black label tents, which I'll explain uh, about then your materials used and whatever. So I'm going to set up these 10 mil poles again. These, these are the ones you get from Hilleberg. Uh, they're 10 mil, they're the DAC feather light. So I always try and set the poles up when I'm down on the ground and keep them down low to the ground. I just feel there's less chance of them getting damaged then. They are very strong, but you don't want to damage any of the parts of the there, so we'll get these set up. And just a wee extra bit, the tent bag, the pole bag, sorry, was made up for me. This is actually some of the red Hilleberg material as well, as is my peg bag. And I'll show you the pegs in a minute as well. over there. Now, the pegs you get with the Hilleberg, oh, I should have had these sitting out actually. You get 10 of these sort of Y-shaped gold anodized pegs, very high quality. Very, very nice looking as well. And again, 
Billy Bird do this with everything. It's all the materials they use in their tent. So this is actually part of the guy line as well. And again, this is part of the floor material. I think that's one of the things I like about it. It's just everything's used with their own material. I've never actually used these pegs. Not that they're not any good. It's just they're very similar to the MSR mini groundhogs. Sort of same, same size and shape. And I've got lots of different types of pegs in the house. So I just felt these were sort of too nice to use. They're nice and shiny. They sort of brought a bit of the golem out of me. So I uh, decided not to use them, but I brought them here. So as I said, everything all in, two, uh, two kilograms. I've sacrificed a little bit of weight. If I take the 10 mil poles instead of the 9 mil poles, I weighed these up in the house. So I weighed that in the bag and I weighed these ones in the bag. And taking the 10 mil poles instead adds a whopping 55 grams to your pack. So I think it's worth it. If you're going, maybe going to be going a bit higher up or you think the weather's going to be pretty rough, I'll just take the 10 mil poles with me. As you can see, I've got still got this guy line attached to the rucksack. Now, we don't really need it because it's not that windy today. In fact, there's hardly any wind. And um, the idea is, it gives me an idea. It, well, obviously keeps it attached to the rucksack to stop it blowing away, but it gives me an idea which, which end of the tent to face into the wind. Um, the idea is the way I like the vestibule to sit for the wind and then I can sort of store my stuff safely in there. So I'll get the tent laid out. This corner here, and the door should be facing you. Here's the footprint attached as well. You can see that there. I'm just going to quickly show you here. The idea is we feed the poles through these external pole sleeves, and they're going to land up in these. It's almost like a leather material, plastic or leather. Again, good, good quality Hilleberg material. The poles are going to get locked in there and up at the other end and then up at the other end it's going to land up in this socket here and you can adjust it's going to land up in this socket here and then you can adjust it up here to tighten it up so this is one of the other things I like about the tent I've had a few single pole tunnel tents and you put the pole through the centre of the tent you have then to walk round the tent, put, put the pole into a small grommet and come back and put it into another grommet. The idea with these tents is this one's freestanding. You can put it in a small space and you don't really need to be moving about round about the tent to get it patched. It's really quick to patch. Just as I was saying, keep the pole in so far. I'm not going to push the pole all the way through. What I want to do is start pulling the tent back towards me, over the pole. Just pops up. All I've got in the tent there is four small pegs in each corner of the ground sheet. So as you can see, the tent's up. I'm just going to peg out the vestibule, and there's a part at the rear of the tent I'll show you for ventilation. Now you've noticed I've got these guy lines sort of tied up and all not. I've done that with other three, it just keeps it nice and tidy. Four guy lines in now. I like to keep these as close to the tent as I can before I pack it away. And that just allows me just to tighten up a little bit. You don't want to over tighten it and start sort of change the shape of the poles and the tent and whatever. Just pegging out the vestibule here. So as you can see, it's attached onto these metal rings, the metal ring through there. And the idea is can actually swap it over and that lets you see which sort of door you want to sort of roll up you know this one or that one i always um have that back corner guy line out the idea is you can see the overlap here in the storm flap so my idea is the wind's going to come this way and the rain's going to come over here i don't want the wind coming in this way and blowing water underneath the storm flap so we'll just peg this out and again you leave this as close to the tent as you can so so as trying to pitch it give this a pull, that's it nice and taut. So we'll go out to the rear of the tent now. The idea with 
this one. This is just to allow some airflow up into the rear of the tent, up into the inner. You can see how high the mud wall is. So a lot of people worry about wind and rain getting blown in, but there's a huge mud wall there, so the bathtub design. So I'll just plug this in. Get this pegged in. That's the tent all pitched. Just take it back a bit. There you go, just a quick walk round the tent. All nice and tight, nice and secure. It's a very quick tent to pitch. I'm just going to have a quick look in the inside now and I'll explain about how the ventilation in the tent works. Before going any further, I was just wanting to mention earlier on the, the, the Tillybird company, they're actually based in Sweden, they're a Swedish company. And uh, tents are manufactured in Estonia, all very high quality materials for the tent. Uh, the exterior of the tent, the fly sheet, is a 20 denier ripstop nylon. Uh, it's triple silicon coated, makes it very durable, very waterproof, also makes it very, very strong. The inner of the, the tent, and that yellow material you're seeing there, is a 10 denier. Again, it's a ripstop nylon and it's got a DWR, that's a durable water repellent coating on it. So it's not waterproof as such, but it is moisture proof, you know, if you get some rain, some splashes of rain going in, whatever. And uh, the floor material, very thick, very hard wear, and it's a 50 denier, and it's a double coated polyurethane floor. Tent itself, just for waterproof there, it's got a hydrostatic head of 5,000 millimetres. And the floor has got a hydrostatic head of 12,000. So very waterproof tent. And that's just the yellow label one for the, the lighter seasons. This large museum mesh door here is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it does help keep the tent cool in the warmer months. There's, you can also remove this inner tent and you can buy a replacement inner. It's entirely made of this mesh. Uh, no saving in weight, however. The thing about the mesh door, I thought it would be quite drafty on the cooler months. I had it out the last couple of weeks. It's been quite cold at nights, went down to about zero, just below zero. And I have noticed when you open the door, even at the top, how cold the air is coming in, and then you zip it back up. The tent very quickly warms back up. So again, there's no vents in the tent at all. But you've got this bathtub design. It's very high, so the I've got the, the rear part of the tent fully open, so there is a bit of breeze coming in here pushing this wall in. It's absolutely fine. The inner of the tent is breathable, so that's what I like. You always keep that back part of the tent open as much as possible. And then you've got this large mesh door as well. And again, on, on the cooler nights, if you want, you can just sort of unzip the doors a bit if it's dry, let a bit more ventilation through. The tent is classed as a one-man tent. The, the, the tent is classed as a one-man tent purely because there's one door on it and only one small vestibule. Uh, sometimes you see it mar marketed up as a 1.5. Uh, I'm planning on coming camping with my small cocker spaniel pretty soon in the warmer months, getting them back out of the camping with me. And I'm pretty sure there's more than enough space for the twos in here. So what I'm going to do is... I've actually brought two sleep mats with me just to demonstrate how much space is in this for a one-man tent. The mat at the rear is a Thermarest New Air x -Therm. It's just a regular size. It's a bit narrower. Um, it's a sort of insulated sleep pad for the winter months or the colder months. I've used that in my last two camps there. And this one is the Ether, the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT insulated. And this is a large size, so it's a bit wider. And again, it actually is a bit, it sits, it's a bit deeper as well. It sits a bit higher up in the pillow in there. So you can actually get two pads in here. So if there was two people camping and something happened with one of the tents and you had to share, I mean, if you were friendly enough, you could sort of go head to toe opposite directions in the tent. And if you were saying maybe a couple just want to travel light and share the, the weight of the tent, then two, two, the two of, two of you could camp in there. 
and again I'll just pop my rucksack in here in a moment just to show you how much space is in there so I'm just going to take my boots off and jump into the tent just to show you the headroom so I'm now sitting inside the tent I'm exactly six feet and I'm sitting on the higher of the two pads and that's the highest point of the tent I've still got a few inches you can see I'm moving either way and I'm only just touching the inner even winding down this end it's, it's not an issue there's plenty of room for me to move about and I'm quite sort of broad across the middle area as well Woods are in for one man Here's the catenary cuts that I was talking about earlier I should have shown you these earlier on uh, This is just to allow more air flow up through the tent A lot of people have concerns with this tent about rain getting driven in and bouncing up but I can pull that right up and it's completely protected by this bathtub design there, it's, it's absolutely great, it's the same in the rear as well, I just like it open as far as it can go I probably have it too high sometimes to be honest but I just like as much airflow getting through the tent as I can just to keep the tent cooler and just keep down the condensation Just a very quick look in the vestibule, I've just hastily threw my 48 litre rucksack in there and I've got my eggs in here so probably from about my knees down there's the, the footprint of the tent and the boot's going right out to the edge you can zip the tent from the top and the bottom yeah, there as well uh, a lot of people cut these off because they feel that the, if it's really stormy and windy you know you're getting this sort of rattling noise you put little bits of Dynamo in there cut a bit of weight down but I'll be you not to do that because you do that you're, you're pulling the zip the wrong way and you're putting quite a bit of tension on these zips just very quickly, I've just realised the battery in my phone's about to run out So I'm just holding the phone in my hand here um, Things I like about the tent, maybe things people wouldn't like so much about the tent Main thing I like about the tent is the very high quality of the materials uh, throughout It's all double stitched, everything's just, everything about it I like that way It's a very strong tent for me, it's not the biggest pack size. You can sort of squash it down in the bag of it. I tend not to do it too much. Uh, the weight, like I said, everything in's coming in at just under two kilos. For a lot of the ultra light guys, that's probably a no no. For me, it doesn't bother. I just suck it up and carry the weight. That's it. Uh, cons, probably the price. The Halle Bear tents have the prices went through the roof lately. As have many of the other tents, the supply, uh, sorry, the demand has been pushed through the roof. There's huge waiting lists for these tents, as with some of the other tents as well. So the price of everything's gone up. These are going to go up as well. That's sort of the main one. I really like the pack. A couple of dog walkers going past. I probably think I'm going off my, <laughs> going off my head talking to myself. Um, as I was saying earlier on, the triple silicon coated outer. I really like it because of the the strength, the durability. You can see the pattern there. Also the waterproof. I've had tents where, yeah, they're waterproof and the water runs off it. Um, the outer also soaked up quite a lot of the water and began to sag. I've never had that with this tent. Um, again, it's, can be a, it can be an issue. It can be a downside. This tent, you really need to pitch it in a breeze and get the air flowing through because there's no vents in it. You need the air coming through to keep down the condensation. Because this outer isn't a breathable material, it can be quite prone to condensation. It's normally up here at the high part of the door area and the top of the roof on the outer. It's never been an issue because you just unhook the inner with these toggles and I pack it away separate and then I can let this dry off when I'm walking home uh, All in all I think it's a great tent I may have mentioned earlier just the price, that's a downside for a lot of guys uh, everything has really the inflation, everything's going through the roof the prices of the tent, so it is a downside I, again it, it might be a good thing in a way, it can actually be looked on as a bit of an investment I mean the, the second hand ones are holding their money as well so if I ever do want to move the tent on then you know, it won't be going for peanuts sort of thing Anyway, the time I was packing up um, Did start again Anyway, the time I was packing up the, the battery's about dead on this phone as I said earlier I hope I've not missed anything out This is really my first try at doing a sort of tent overview review All I can say is I've used the tent about 10-12 times And I've enjoyed being in the tent every single time Comfortable, spacious interior 
I really like the inside of the car. I find it quite cheery. You know, being intense where the white or grey or whatever inside. And in the, the longer, darker months, the colder months, it's just not for me. Uh, I, I like the sort of yellow. I just find it a bit of a warmer colour. More, more, more welcoming, more, more comfortable. There's loads of space in here for me in this tent. That was the other reason I bought the tent. I uh, like the small tunnel tents you can't sit up on, uh, sit up inside, you can't get dressed, whatever. Uh, the easy pitching for me, that, that's why I bought it as well. Good, strong, robust tent. I always feel safe in it, even without the 10 mil poles. With the 9 mil poles, I don't care what the weather's like. I feel safe in my Halliburg. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this overview. It's my first sort of... Uh, shot at doing one of these videos there will be quite a few mistakes in it the nerves are probably shown as well but uh bear with me i'm going to try and do a few more of these so thanks again for watching and if there's anything on here you've liked or disliked or whatever any suggestions please leave a comment thanks again bye now and just very quickly that's outer pitched on its own with the 10 mil poles and the inner pitched on its own with the 9 mil poles so let's you see how much space Thanks again.